Hi guys, so today's video is going to be 30 second book summaries. I have a list of 15 different books and I'm going to be giving you 30 second summaries for each of these books. I'm going to alternate between popular books and maybe not as popular books so that way you get a mix of both. I will have the timer up here. It's almost going to be like a little game for me to see if me, somebody who normally talks way too much, has the ability to summarize these books in 30 seconds. So that timer is going to be up there to hold me true. Once the timer goes off, I will let you know how I personally feel. <laughs> Starting with Witcher in three, two, one. This story follows a man named Geralt of Rivia who is a witcher or a monster hunter. There are all different kinds of monsters throughout the continent. That is what the setting is called. It is a war-torn land and Geralt, who is just this humble witcher who is looked down upon by most of society, seen as a monster himself, he through destiny is linked with a sorceress named Yennefer and a young princess named Ciri and there's a lot of themes about how mankind may actually be the true monsters. I personally do really love the Witcher series. I don't think it's without its faults. There's a couple of things about the writing style and the pacing that are a little frustrating. Also, it starts with two collections of short stories and then goes on to the main series. I have a whole video talking about the reading order if you need that, but yes, I do love this series. Although I gotta say, I think my opinions about it are definitely tweaked by how much I love the video game adaptation, The Wild Hunt by CD Projekt Red. Next up, we have Blood Song by Ryan in three, two, one. This story follows a man named Valen. It's a name of the wind setup where our main character is telling you his life story and we follow him from boyhood into early adulthood. And in his boyhood, he is going to this essentially like a school for Navy SEALs almost in a fantasy world. They put these kids through so much, but he comes out of it as this awesome warrior. And then he's realizing that he's just some simple, humble guy within a corrupt world. I personally loved Blood Song a lot. I have heard some pretty negative things about its sequels, which I have at the moment not had the chance to read. I'm actually really scared to read the sequels, but I loved that first book so much and I am not normally somebody who likes that setup of somebody telling their life story. Next up, we have Full Metal Alchemist. I'm not gonna do the countdown every time. I'm just gonna go for it. Here we go. This story follows two brothers, Edward and Alphonse, who lost parts of their body in an attempt to use alchemy to bring their mother back from the dead. Now they are set on finding a way to get their bodies restored. And along the way, they are discovering that there's a lot of corruption in the military that they serve. There's a lot of other huge cast of characters that are all fantastic, varying degrees of good and evil. And oh my gosh, so funny. Obviously, through talking about my feelings of it, I love Full Metal Alchemist so, so much. I think it's fantastic. One of my favorite stories of all time. If you are a little nervous to try out a manga, I would say give the anime a try. If you do though, check out Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. It's not that the other one's not worth watching or anything. It's just that Brotherhood follows the actual manga plotline way more. Also, I know this sounds weird, but just skip the first episode. It's like a weird pilot. I don't know. It, I don't know what they were doing. Next up, we have Uprooted by Naomi Novik, and here we go with that one. This follows a woman named Agnieszka, who is just a part of this village that is kind of terrorized by this creepy forest. It's extremely atmospheric, and there's this wizard who comes and takes her away, and she discovers she might have abilities that have to do with magic. They are not the normal ways in which you're supposed to use magic. And as a result, she has to face a lot of adversity from magic users, but her magic may have the key to freeing her village from this evil forest. It's cutting it close on that. Did I like this book? No, I unfortunately did not like it. I was really looking forward to it. I love the folklore elements that were in the story, but no, I didn't I didn't particularly care for this one. Next up is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. Here we go. This follows two main characters, Vin and Kelsier. This is a what if the bad guy won sort of story. We are following the world a thousand years after that happened and things are not looking very good. The population is divided into nobility and ska, which are essentially like slaves. Vin is a part of the ska population, but through Kelsier and a group of misfits, 
she discovers she might have some magical abilities that have to do with ingesting metals and this team is set to take down the bad guy. Do I like Mistborn? Absolutely, it is my favorite trilogy of all time. I love it so, so much. I have a lot of videos to do with Mistborn. I love it a lot. Next up, we have the Seven Realm series by Cindy Williams Chima and this story follows two main characters, Han, Alistair, and Reza, Anna, Mariana. It is a quartet, and within each book, we see our characters grow so, so much. Han is a street rat, street thief, lord of crime, and then Reza is kind of a spoiled princess, and the two of them end up through some very unusual circumstances. Their lives are intertwined, and they are kind of tackling some evil wizards and corrupt politicians. I like this story. Yes, I had a very good time reading it. I wouldn't say I was super emotionally invested, but every time I picked it up, it felt like coming home. There was just something about it that I really enjoyed. It was comfortable and I liked the way it was written. It's slightly older fantasy. I don't know. I just had a really good time with it. I, I definitely would recommend it. Next up, we have Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This follows a young man named Laszlo Strange who believes in this place that everybody else thinks is not real and he knows everything there is to possibly know about this mythical place and one day he has the opportunity to potentially discover if it does indeed exist. We also have another character named Sarai. We don't know a lot about her, but she is blue and she lives with some other blue people and they are trapped. And then eventually through some crazy circumstances, these two may meet. I definitely liked Strange the Dreamer, but it took me so long to get into it, partly because the writing style is super flowery and super gorgeous all the time and that's not really my thing even though I can definitely appreciate it. it. took me so long to get into and I ended up being so surprised because when I stuck with it I ended up loving the duology so much. I think the themes are very important. I think it tackles some really intense stuff overall. Love it. Next up we have the Bartimus Trilogy by Jonathan Stroud. This follows a young boy named Nathaniel, who is the apprentice to a very mean magician, and he is determined to advance his magical studies on his own, and he wants to summon something that's way beyond his abilities. He wants to summon a djinn named Bartimus, and you get Nathaniel's perspective and Bartimus's perspective, and Bartimus is hilarious. This is a middle grade series. The two of them, their relationship throughout the trilogy, the way it builds is fantastic. I did definitely really enjoy this story. It's been a long time since I've read it because I read it more when I was a kid, but I remember it having one of the most satisfying endings and I just really enjoyed the relationships progression throughout the story. Next up, we have Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This follows a girl named Elizabeth whose dream is to become a protector of this magical library. And this library is dangerous because these books can turn into monsters, hence the need for people to protect them. Her dream is to become a warden of this magical library, but she is framed for one of the books turning into a monster, and suddenly she's discovering so much more than she ever expected, and she is paired up with a kind of interesting person she thought was always evil. This is a standalone that I enjoyed a lot. It's really hard to find standalones in fantasy, but I thought this one was really fun. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was kind of strangely cozy. It just filled me with warm fuzzies. Next up, we have The Strongo Saga by Jetson Roberts, which follows a young boy named Hafton. He is the son of a Viking chieftain and an Irish princess, but his mother was actually a slave and thus he is a slave. But due to some very, very sad things that happen at the beginning of the story, Hafton is granted his freedom and has the opportunity to discover sorry, the timing oh no he has the, the opportunity to discover how to become a viking which is a life that he always kind of looked at with envy but also hatred i really like the story i think it is so extremely underrated and i wish more people knew about it so hopefully if you're looking for a good historical fiction read you'll give this one a go next up is wheel of time by robert jordan slash brandon sanderson this story follows a young man named Rand in a fantasy world where women's ability to access magic is good to go, but men's ability to access magic, the magic is tainted. Any man 
who tries to tap into that magic will go insane, but all the prophecies say that the person who's going to defeat the ultimate evil is supposed to be a man who can use magic. And they're like, "Uh uh-oh, because if that guy goes insane, he can kill lots of people. That is the setup Rand and friends discover they might have something to do with all of that. I read the first four Wheel of Time books. It's a 14 book long series. And within those first four, didn't have the amount of character work that I wanted, but people who love the series feel totally different. So if it sounds interesting to you, definitely give it a go. Next up, we have Traders Blade by Sebastian Day Castell. This is a story that follows a young man named Falcio and a couple of his pals. They used to be the best of the best who guarded the king, but the king was overthrown by a group of dukes and duchesses. And now his group of, they're almost like knights, but better. They are now looked at with hatred, but despite that, they are still remaining regal and noble in their way of life, and they are trying to fulfill something their dead king left for them. I thoroughly enjoyed the beginning of the story, but the more it went, the less I personally cared for it. It got to be rather meandering. I didn't feel like the stakes were particularly high, but I think that the tone is supposed to be despite there being some pretty pretty graphic things, despite that, I think it's supposed to be more fun and lighthearted while having some serious moments mixed in. If you like Lies of Locke Lamora, I think that you would like this story. Next up, we have The Kingdom of Fact by Marie Lu. This story follows the other Mozart. We're so used to hearing about Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, this child prodigy musician, but he actually had an older sister who heavily inspired him and may have been just as talented as him. This story is historical fiction, magical realism. So we see our main character going through this magical world that her and her brother have created. It was a real thing that her and her brother did in real life. And I thought the way that Marie Lu took that into the story was fantastic. I just gave away my thoughts on this. I absolutely loved it. It's a new favorite book for me. I thought it was so moving, so powerful. Ugh, such a good story. And one and done. It's just one book. Next up, we have Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, which I actually mentioned earlier when talking about Blood Song. It's a man telling you his life story. So you follow him from early boyhood into early adulthood, teenage years, and he ends up after some terrible things happen. He's on his own. He has to persevere through a lot, but eventually he makes his way to this school that will enable him to learn more about magic and important skills. And then from there, we see that he's amazing at music and he goes on adventures. I personally didn't really care for Name of the Wind. I think the writing is absolutely stunning, but I mentioned before, I'm not really a fan of those sorts of setups and this one didn't really break the mold for me when it comes to that. And lastly, we have Crown of Feathers by Nikki Pau Preto. This follows a young girl and her sister Val. The main character is Veronica. They are set on trying to bond with a phoenix, but to do this, they have to do it from the time that it is hatched. Veronica has the opportunity, but her sister Val is crazy and then things go wrong and Veronica decides she needs to leave her crazy sister and she ends up joining this group of rebellious phoenix riders. They are rebels who are trying to gain equality for magic users in their world and I thought it was a good time. I just said I thought it was a good time. If you like a lot of lore in your stories, I think you would really enjoy this. If you're somebody who enjoys both young adult and adult fantasy and you like animal companion type stories, this is the book for you. That's it for 15 books with 30 second summaries. I have no idea if I did a very good job summarizing them because I was just trying really hard to get it in 30 seconds, but I think I did okay. I find that sometimes for myself, I sometimes I'm like, I just want to know what a book is about and that's, that's it. I just want to know. And so this is kind of me trying to practice doing that while also hopefully providing you with some quick insight about some books you may have heard about, but don't actually know what they're about. Let me know if you would like me to do this in the future. And if you do, let me know what books you'd like me to do this for. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys later. Bye.